There's no space that his love can't reach There's no place where we can't find peace There's no end to amazing grace Take me in with your arms spread wide Take me in like an orphan child Never let go, never leave my side This is my resurrection song This is my hallelujah come This is why it's to you I run This is my resurrection song This is my Hello, my name is Laura, and in this tumultuous week, uh, the Revised Common Lectionary focuses on Psalm 23. I invite you to join with me in a time of guided prayer. I'll be walking us through Psalm 23 in a gentle, quiet way. So it may help for you to find a, a comfortable place to be. Uh, where you can be quiet for a few moments. You may want to have a uh, pen and paper handy. You may want to have your Bible handy, maybe some Kleenex and a glass of water. Plan on uh, about 20 minutes for this. And so you may want to pause the video now and take a few moments to get yourself ready for this um, beautiful time of prayer in Psalm 23. Welcome back. 
As I read Psalm 23, I invite you to let the words soak you. You may want to take a deep breath. You may want to take a few more deep breaths if you need to, to welcome the Holy Spirit into your humanity and release to Christ everything that is heavy or tense. Hear the word of the Lord. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Let those words sit with you for a few moments. I invite you to picture yourself in a green pasture. Close your eyes and imagine what your green pasture looks like. What do you notice? Your good shepherd is there in the pasture with you. Where are you in relation to your shepherd? Can you move closer? The good shepherd is calling your name. How do you respond? Your good shepherd is leading you beside still waters. Can you go there? And what happens when you and the good shepherd arrive at those still waters? Your good shepherd is restoring your soul there. Can you take a drink of water and receive that restoration? Stay there as long as you need to. Pause the video if you like and rest in that place of water with the shepherd. Can you let the Good Shepherd lead you on a path? Where does the path go? What do you notice about it? Further along the path, there's a dark valley and you and the Good Shepherd journey through that valley. The Shepherd is with you, and no evil can harm you there. What do you hear him saying as you journey through this dark valley? Can you tell the Good Shepherd what you're afraid of? The Shepherd journeys with you through this valley with his rod and his staff. These are comforts to you for they protect you. What do you notice about 
the good shepherd, shepherd's comfort for you? Can you receive it? You and the good shepherd come through the valley to the other side. The good shepherd turns you around to look at the valley you've just journeyed through. What do you see? What do you learn as you look at this valley from the other side? Then the Good Shepherd leads you to uh, a banquet. You and the Good Shepherd arrive at the banquet and there's much going on. What do you notice about the banquet prepared for you? The Good Shepherd invites you to your place at the banquet and it has been prepared just for you. When you imagine your place at the banquet, what do you notice? You begin to realize that the shepherd who's been leading you has become the host of the banquet. And the host of the banquet shows you that your enemies uh, are looking in, but you're protected from them. And they see you are given a place of honor at this banquet. What happens as you notice that this is seen by your enemies and your place of honor and safety with the host is there before them. The host calls you to the head of the banquet and he anoints your head with oil. Oil pours over you, bringing healing and, and comfort and restoration to you. Can you let the oil soak you for a few moments? What does that feel like? And then the host gives you your cup. It's a chalice, it's beautiful, and it's unique for you. Can you notice what your cup looks like? Your cup is overflowing. Can you drink from it? What happens when you drink from the cup that your host has given? And then the host takes you around to this beautiful uh, place. And there is a room prepared for you in this place. And your host wants to show you when you go to your, your room in this beautiful mansion, what do you notice about the room that's been prepared for you? And then your host leads you back to the banquet and you notice something following you. It's goodness and mercy. And when you imagine goodness and mercy following you, what do they look like? You return to the banquet and everyone is glad to see you there. You are loved. You have a place in this banquet. You have a place in this house of God. It's your whole life and all of eternity that you get to be here. 
I invite you to enjoy this for a few moments in the quiet. May the banquet of God bless you and feed you and establish a deep place of trust and peace in your being. You are beloved. Amen. Right, to take a gentle and deep breath. May this Psalm 23 be a blessing. You may want to spend a few moments uh, writing down what you've experienced in this prayer time, uh, perhaps even uh, drawing what you've seen. The Lord is your shepherd, and you shall not want. Amen. Good morning, St. Mark's friends and family. Um, it is Sunday, May the 3rd. And so tomorrow is the day we get to say, May the 4th be with, with you. So don't start early. Um, it is May the 3rd. It is the 4th Sunday in Eastertide. Um, and so um, we are still celebrating Easter and we will be having communion um, in a little bit. So I encourage you to, if you haven't already, gather up your bread and juice um, of whatever kind you have. And we all know that we uh, have what we have because, you know, we're, we're not shopping as much, hopefully. Um, so we will do that in a few minutes. I really want to encourage you to um, call me, to call the church office. Let us know how you're doing. If there's anything that you need, any way that we can pray about um, your situation specifically, um, if you have family members you're worried about or who are sick, um, we want to be able to um, to be there for you. We can't be there physically, um, but we can be there in prayer and in um, communication and community. So let us know. Um, also, um, we are uh, not sure when we're going to meet back together again. Uh, the bishop has said through May 15th at least. Um, so the Sunday following that, I don't have my calendar in front of me, um, would possibly potentially be uh, the Sunday we gather. Um, it, if it is, we're going to do it in very different ways. And so uh, we will let you know what's going to happen. We want everyone to feel safe and to be safe, clearly. That is um, our job number one. So um We'll let you know as we come up with ideas. We met as church council last Monday and talked about some of the ways that we need to think about what we're going to do and how we're going to keep people safe. Um, and so we're going to make some provisions for sanitizing, uh, the wearing of face masks, all of the things that we're doing to try to keep ourselves as safe as possible in, um, in this time of pandemic. Um, you might have noticed I don't have a little scarf on my head or any kind of head covering whatsoever. And according to uh, scripture, I could probably be stoned for not covering my head. Um, but uh, I just, I thought I'm going to, there's a freedom in doing this as well as a fear. And, um, but um, I'm just kind of embracing the bald at this point. And um, uh, I actually went to Publix and, and I have to say it was a little discouraging. I, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it takes a little bit of guts, I guess, to, to go out as a woman, bald headed. Um, so I'm on aisle 10 and about to get onto the aisle and a couple of guys were just hanging out there. And the one guy made a big, uh, a big show of making sure I, I went ahead of him. And then I heard him just uproariously laughing. Um, behind me. No, uh, it's not always about me. I know that, but uh, I have a feeling he was laughing at me. And um, my first instinct almost always is to is to get ticked off. So I was like, well, that's kind of jerky. But then I felt sorry for him. I thought, you know, I don't know. I, I just sure hope he doesn't have anybody in his family that has to go through chemotherapy and lose their hair. And, um, you know, uh, but if he does, I hope that it gives him a little bit of empathy uh, and compassion for people that do. So um, that being said, um, 
all of the information that we've put on the website um, and on the Facebook page. Um, again, I encourage you to just keep in contact with us. Let us know how we can be praying. Um, Patty's son um, came through his surgery well. She's back now. Uh, and um, so uh, I believe George and Carol's son is doing well. So we're thankful for your prayers for that. And anything else you want to add, comment, type away, put it in the comments and we'll, uh, we'll pray for it on the spot if we can. Um, and uh, certainly afterward, okay? So this morning we are in the Gospel of John. We're in the 10th chapter uh, and verses one through 10. And we get to hear from Jesus directly this morning. So hear these words from the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of the stranger. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. And this is the word of God for the people of God. We say, thanks be to God. Please pray with me, Lord. You are the gate for the sheep. You are our good shepherd. And we, we, Seek to hear your voice and to follow it exclusively, Lord. I pray that all of your words today will enter into the places in our hearts and open up exactly what they need to this morning for us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So we heard from Laura in that beautiful meditation a few minutes ago and and we see this picture of the shepherd. But this is, this is the, um, the verses right before Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And that he says he is the gate. The shepherd and the gate and the sheepfold image, the shepherd image was used over 500 times in scripture. It was a very common metaphor. Isaiah 40 talks about God who is powerful and sovereign and yet holds the lambs gently and tenderly against his breast and carries them safely. Ezekiel 34 has God speaking to us and saying that he will rescue his sheep from wherever they are from danger. And of course, Psalm 23 that we love so much. In this word here today, we hear Jesus say that phrase again, I am. Those words, I am in Greek, ego, I me, it means I am. It means the I am. It means it's the words that God used to introduce himself to Moses in the burning bush. And it carries uh, a strength to it when Jesus says those words. I am. I am the gate. Now we, we've heard Jesus say, I am the resurrection and the life. I'm the bread of life. I'm the light of the world. I'm living water. But the gate it's kind of, what? What, is, what does that mean? But the metaphor and the picture that it brought for people that were in an agrarian society and knew what shepherding looked like, even if they weren't shepherds themselves, they would know that the gate did several things. First of all, when a shepherd was out with his flock out in the fields, wandering the, the hillsides, bringing them to good green pasture, and to clean water. He would sometimes have to make uh, a shelter for them at night where they would stay. And so they would build pens of rocks and, and brambles and bushes and thorns and whatever they could get to kind of make this surrounding little corralled area where the sheep would go in and be safe and watched over. And the gate, and then the shepherd himself would 
lay across the opening into this penned area. He would literally be the gate, the gatekeeper, the gateway, the, the protector. And that's what that's what God offers and Jesus offers in the I am statement. That he is the gate and he is the shepherd and he will give us three things. He will he will give us safety. He will give us provision. He will lead us to the green pastures and the clear running water. And he will give us freedom, freedom to come in and to go out. He will guide us in and out of the sheepfold. I've got a picture um, I'll put up of, of Riley this morning. Uh laying on the threshold between the porch and the and the and the house just waiting for me trying to see where i was going to go am i going out or coming in she follows me like a little sheep sometimes that threshold that liminal space we call it that space betwixt and between sometimes we're waiting we're waiting there we're waiting for the shepherd to lead us in or out. He does both. He leads us in to safety. He leads us in to the community together, the body. And he also leads us out, out into the world and guides us and goes ahead of us. That is one of the one of the chief things to remember in this scripture today is that as that he leads us, right? He goes ahead of us. He does not push us from behind or uh, scream at us from behind he he goes ahead and he calls us by name as he leads us i find that very comforting to hear my name on the lips of jesus my shepherd it's a powerful thing he calls us by name and we follow we follow because we know his voice <clears throat> hopefully we know his voice how do we know his voice we listen, we listen to him, we listen for him. We hang out with him. The sheep, you know, the sheep get to know their shepherd because they spend time with the shepherd as he tenderly carries them at one time or another. They spend that time with him. They know his voice intimately. They know his smell intimately and they will follow his voice and not the voice of a stranger. Can we say the same? Can we say the same, that we are always following Jesus' voice, that we're listening and that we're hearing Jesus and not a wolf in sheep's clothing, as Jesus will talk about later in the following verses. The thief that comes to steal and kill and destroy will uh, be sometimes very crafty, like a wolf. Wolves and other predators that are after sheep will sometimes roll in the sheep dung, uh, to smell like a sheep. So the smell uh, of the shepherd along with his voice becomes very important to us. The time that we've spent close to him, held close to his chest, are the times that we get to know his voice and his smell. Because the thief does come to steal and kill and destroy. The wolves are out there waiting. Jesus says in Matthew, you know, that I send you out as sheep among wolves. Be as clever as serpents and harmless as doves, he said. Wolves are real. False prophets are real. Jesus, right before this uh, scripture this morning in, in chapter 9, talks about the Pharisees being false prophets and blind guides. They are false gatekeepers. They're trying to, they're trying to guard the gate and keep out uh, who they think needs to be kept out. And Jesus says, no, no, I am. Ego of me, I am the gatekeeper. I know my flock and they know me. And we follow his voice, the one voice. You can't learn it by listening to other people. You have to learn it by spending time with the shepherd yourself. So I encourage you to do that in every way and in every manner that you can. Get to know his voice, get to know what he does, what he says, how he behaves. Because I'm seeing an awful lot of um, people today that are confused by, um, by, by voices that they're hearing. 
and behaviors that they're seeing out in the world and thinking it is the voice of God. The voice of God and the voice of Christ, the shepherd, is always love. Always love. No two ways about it. So listen for that voice, that voice of love around you in everything you do. Stick close to the shepherd. And he will provide. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this scripture this morning. Thank you for the meditation by Laura. Thank you for, for letting us be reminded that we are sheep, and that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing when we have a good shepherd and a good gatekeeper who gives us pasture, who provides us safety, and the freedom to come and to go in his will. We are blessed to be the sheep of your hand. Help us this week in all that we do to look for the love and to be the love. In the name of Jesus, the good shepherd, Jesus, the gate, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, this little clip is uh, uh, of a farmer uh, pulling an errant sheep out of a little bit of a mess that he's gotten into. And so as we contemplate Jesus, the good shepherd today, the gatekeeper for us, uh, I want you to carry this picture with you and uh, remember that he will rescue you. We're gonna hear that song from Larry in a, in a few seconds. And um, uh, it's a Lauren Daigle song, I will rescue you. Even when we don't want to be rescued, look at that sheep. He's hanging on for that for that hole, but he comes after us. Amen. So remember this image. God bless. Good morning, St. Mark's. Thank you for joining me this morning. Um, I'd like to play a song, by, which is by Lauren Daigle, and this song is called Rescue. You are not hidden There's never been a moment You were forgotten You are not hopeless Though you have been broken Your innocence stolen I hear you whisper Underneath your breath I hear your SOS your SOS I will set down an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night it's true I will rescue you there is no distance that cannot be covered over and over you're not defenseless I'll be your shelter I'll be your armor I hear you whisper underneath your breath I hear your SOS your SOS I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night, it's true, I will rescue you. I will never stop marching to reach you in the middle of the hardest fight, it's true, I will rescue you. Underneath your breath I hear you whisper You have nothing left I will set out an army To find you In the middle of the darkest Night it's true I will rescue you Stop marching to 
to reach you in the middle of the hardest 